That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Juniper, the directorial debut of Matthew J. Seville, uh, which Greenwich Entertainment is releasing February 24th, 2023, after this has been playing on the festival circuit since 2021. You said directorial debut? Yeah, he's an actor. He had a supporting role in something recently that we saw. But uh, you... Oh, a Black Sheep, uh, for instance, but I, I think this is a very personal autobiographical film from him. Okay. Uh, and it stars the immaculate Charlotte Rampling. I thought this movie was okay. I feel I have the same sentiment. Oh, okay. It's set in New Zealand in the 90s, and I would say it revolves around a young man named Sam, played by... Uh, George Ferrier from the TV series One of Us is Lying. I did like his character, or that actor playing that character. But anyway, he looks like maybe he's like, I think he's like 17 mm -hmm. or 18 maybe. Okay, he goes to boarding school. He's being raised by his father alone because the mother has died. Robert, played by Martin Shokas, who you've seen as a villain in lots of things. So one day the dad goes to pick up Sam and says, hey, your grandma's coming. And Sam is like, I don't want to see, I don't know her. And why are you, I don't want to deal with her. Well, you're going to deal with her. So the mother, Charlotte, the grandmother, Charlotte Rampling, is coming to stay at the house because she, we think, has injured herself and needs rest because she's traveling with the nurse. And she can't walk. Her, like, leg looks injured. Yeah, and she, her skin is allergic to being in a cast. So she's in kind of this old-timey apparatus. Yeah, yeah. That does not look comfortable. But basically, she's just a crotchety old drunk-ass lady. From England. They're in New Zealand. No and um, we learn pretty quickly that Sam also has some issues, probably, like, relating to depression. And, and his mother's death. Grieving the loss of his mother. So they do not get along, and we can get into some things, but ultimately, the grandmother and the grandson do bond over drinking alcohol. Gin. As Which culminates, yeah. Because the title is named Juniper for the juniper berries oh, that are sure. in mm -hmm. But everything culminates with uh, a party that is thrown because the dad, who is garbage, leaves New Zealand to go to England to sort out the grandmother's affairs because she, we find out, her condition is worse than we thought. She's suffering from cancer and it's terminal. Mm -hmm. So she has told her son, you need to go handle my... Um, like financial affairs. So he goes off to England and leaves his son with the grandmother. They have a party and it's, we can get into it, but it's lovely. The dad comes back. They decide to send grandma to hospice when they bring her back home so she can die. And she chooses to die by, she says that she wants to see the sunrise over some hill. So they take her there on their property, yeah. on their property. And she drinks a bottle of morphine and dies the end. Um, I thought it was a sweet story. Yeah, it feel it does feel quite personal. And I think it's well acted. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty dull. Like, it didn't send me anywhere, like, emotionally, because the Charlotte Rampling character seems very, mm, like, settled in her decision mm -hmm. to end her life. She's also very settled in, like, wanting to keep her condition quiet. Mm -hmm. And then, so... When she dies, I actually felt relief for her. Like, mm -hmm. well, good for her that she got to choose this for herself. So it's like, you know, great. Then the father and son, their relationship needs work. And we get no resolution or we don't even see growth in it. It needs, you know, the movie that I kept wanting it to be, I think, was something like Marvin's Room with Meryl Streep and Diane Keaton and Leo DiCaprio, where it's this reunion of sisters, but you learn kind of all of these dark secrets that have kept them apart. And there's some character development in there. And I don't get that with... Sam and Robert, over the most basic details, it's like, okay, clearly they've never talked about the mother's death and he got sent off to boarding school. But some kind of other stuff needs to happen in there. And I think with Ruth's background in particular, who's this, she's basically a raging alcoholic. She's leaving, she's Nicolas Cage and leaving Las Vegas. She's drinking gin and water all day long. Yeah. And eating toast with anchovies on it. <laughs> I agree totally because I even think that maybe we should have seen the grandmother die sooner. And then we get a chance, like that is sort of the icebreaker for this father and son to, or the catalyst for this father and son to start communicating and get past, you know, all the loss they've experienced. And instead, I think we waste a little time with this nurse played by Edith Poor, Nurse Sarah, who's yeah. Christian and she's trying to save the soul of Ruth. I don't need any of that. I think like, we waste time with that. We waste time with a funeral. Like this lady doesn't seem like she needed or wanted that. And mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like the dad and the son need that. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like seeing them carry her lifeless body 
from the hill back home. I think that was all the ceremony I needed. That's same, yeah. Yeah. And and that's all she needed. I, in fact, the only thing about that, her soul trying to be saved is she gets to be bitchy with a priest. That was a fun scene. I was also disappointed that Ruth, Charlotte Rampling's character, talks about wanting to like be, be sexual. And then we One. see her kind of lusting after because the her grandson is handsome and then he has three friends who are all young guys who are also good looking and she employs them to like work on her garden. And, you know, they're like, they're not shirtless or anything, but, you know, it's like these young guys working, sweating, drinking beer. And we can see her sitting watching them like she's lusting after them. And the nurse too. And then, yeah. And then it kind of goes nowhere. I almost felt like I, I wish maybe there... I mean, I don't need to see this 70-some-year-old lady have sex with an 18-year-old, but I do think it might have been fun. If it was French, we would have. But I do think it would have been fun to maybe... Because she is in attendance at this party they throw. Mm -hmm. And there's a very sweet scene where the grandmother and the grandson dance. And and I do think that was very well done. Mm -hmm. I but I kind of thought that, oh, maybe one of the boys... Maybe not one of his friends, but another guy maybe kisses her or you know, does something that might satisfy this thought that we have but mm -hmm. but we don't get that we don't uh what we do get is uh, what that's a scene where i did gasp where <gasps> the the glass the glass throwing scene <laughs> so when they first so when the dad first leaves uh sam alone with his grandmother he's mad and Ruth has a bell, like a doorbell that she keeps ringing that would have driven me crazy. Mm -hmm. And it comes to a head because she wants Sam to make her her gin and water. And he kind of messes it up and she like gets super upset. And then he remakes it but puts it in a place where she can't get it because she can't walk. And she throws a glass at him but misses. And he goes, you want another shot? She, and she yeah. said, yeah. Okay, I'll stand here and you can do it. And this lady hits him in the head with a glass. She bings him right in the head. <laughs> and then he leaves and attempts suicide by hanging himself from a tree. And right as he's about to jump off, this white horse comes and shows him some affection. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, was obviously a, a lovely moment. But getting back to the reverend, <laughs> I thought that was a really good scene. Because the nurse, who you already said is Christian and wants to save Ruth's soul... She brings this reverend there, and she's like, why are, why are you here? And he's like, well, I can offer you atonement or something. Mm -hmm. And they have a really good exchange where she's like, okay, well, here, take this $1,000. I'm going to write you a check. And he gets mad. Like, you can pay the devil, but you can't pay. You can do deals with the devil. Yeah, you can do deals with the devil, but you can't pay to get into heaven. And she's like, okay, well, then bye. <laughs> yeah, well, she's like, well, what can you do for me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get out of here. Uh, but yeah, Martin Shokas really has nothing. He... At one point, he's in England settling the affairs, and there's a phone call with Sam, and Sam can tell he's with another woman. And then there's this all, oh, God, it just feels so puritanical because then the dad's like, I'm, I'm, I really have never betrayed your mother. Well, she's dead, so of course you haven't betrayed her, but you're still, like, out here sleeping with other ladies. And your son's having issues, clearly. You know what it kind of reminded me of, too? Uh, the movie with Hugh Jackman and Anthony Hopkins. The Sun? Yeah, where it's like, this kid has issues, mm -hmm. and you are blind, deaf, and dumb. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with them. Not, nope. Even before the dad goes to England, he tells the son, I have to go because... Um, she she being Ruth and her estate, she's the one thing keeping us from going broke. So I just thought it's very mixed messaging, like because this dad is garbage as far as a father, and then it's also like, oh, like that's what you think of your mother is money. And then they also have this beautiful home in New Zealand and they're driving like a Range Rover in but, the nineties. So this is an expensive car. But also like the nurse the nurse needs help. We'll hire another nurse. How is this nurse taking this position and not been like, I can't do this alone? Who are who's hiring Right. Me? And how long do you plan to be gone that you can't get this lady help for a week instead of making your son, who clearly is disgruntled? And then the it? nurse leaves her post. That's how that the scene with the glass happens. For because the grandmother's abusive to the nurse, so the nurse leaves. Okay, did you get paid for that day? I don't know. <laughs> Again, I think it's a well-made movie. Like the acting, I like how it looks. There's some really beautiful shots of like the property they're on. For, and I, yeah, yeah, for a for, and for a first film, I, I think it's just fine. And obviously, based on some very personal, as I've said before, some things from the filmmaker's own life. Uh, and you you netted Charlotte Rampling. Uh, very impressive and I think if you're a fan of hers this is probably must see uh, I do think it's interesting you mentioned that Meryl Streep Leonardo DiCaprio movie because what I do appreciate about this film is that I think if this were like an American film where the grandmother would have been like Meryl Streep and the son would have been like 
I don't know, name some young actor. I feel like it would have been one of those like where the party is vibrant and crazy. Sure, sure. Like like it's really trying to take you on this emotional roller coaster that would have just felt like manipulative or like egregious trauma from the past. Yes, sure. I, and again, so so I do appreciate that this movie's not doing that. That it's keeping it simple. A matter of fact, I don't need that. But you can be simple and still have character development. Sure, sure. That, that that gives us me a portrait of these people beyond this frame that explains why things are so stagnant and estranged right now. Sure. Sure. It's a quiet movie that I thought was okay, so I would give it two and a half out of five. What would you give it? Same. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.